Today we're talking about things that cannot be seen. Seeing the invisible, lesson number eight in our study of In the Crucible with Christ. Now, our memory text is Hebrews 11, verse 27. Hebrews 11, verse 27. By the way, if you have your Bibles, go to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to spend time in the invisible chapter. It's there, but there are certain things in it that we cannot see except we walk by faith. Mm. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to look at the invisible chapter. By the way, if you're talking about faith, Hebrews chapter 11 is the faith chapter, but the book of James is the faith book. From the beginning to the very end, talks about faith all along the way. Hebrews 11, verse 27, here's what we are told this morning. By faith, he, that is Moses, forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Mm. I want you to consider that for a moment. How many of us walk by sight and not by faith? Yeah. Now, not by faith, in, you know, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight, but how many of us walk by sight and not by faith? This is a very legitimate question in the Christian world because many of us, after giving our lives to Christ, we enter in what I call the intrepid walk with God. We are not sure about where God is leading and we want all the details before we enter into the journey. We want our ticket paid for, we want our seat chosen, we want, we want the details from our point of destination, from our point of inception to our point of destination, and we want God to tell us everything. We walk by sight and not by faith. Yeah. But when you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11, let's start with verse 1, because this, is an, this entire book is an invisible book. <laughs> Everything outlined in this book, in this chapter, sorry, is about people who walked by faith and not by sight. Now let's look at the answer to the question, what is faith? Hebrews 11 verse 1, what does it say, Shelley? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm. Okay, now the evidence. So, so what we are being told here is in the court of Christian uh, veracity, faith can convict a Christian. Mm -hmm. In the court of trusting God, faith is sufficient to convict a Christian. The Bible says in verse 2, for by it, let's look at some of the things, for by it, Elders obtain a good testimony. Yes. Verse 3, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are invisible. And that's a very powerful statement because how could something that does not exist create something that does exist? Let's go to Romans chapter 1. And this is important because a lot of times people say, well... I don't really have any accountability to God because I don't really believe he exists anyway. Look at Romans chapter 1. All right. Starting with verse, hmm, verse 18, Romans 1 verse 18. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, they could know, but they decide to suppress what could yeah. be revealed to them. That's why it's important to realize we are not just accountable for what we have read. We are also accountable for what we could have read. Mm -hmm. If you remove the high voltage sign, it doesn't change the context of the fence. It's still high voltage. Mm -hmm. We are still accountable for what we could have known. Verse 19, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are what? Clearly, clearly seen. Now think about that for a moment. His invisible attributes are clearly seen. <laughs> that means, let's go to the rest of the verse and see what it means. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile or vain in their imagination, their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. So what, be, what is being told us by the Apostle Paul is that the invisible attributes of God are clearly revealed to us in the surrounding creation. The writer, 
poses the question for people that don't really trust God. And here's one of the statements that was included in the lesson on the life that says, we often say, if God really loved me, he would certainly do such and such for me. Have you ever found yourself uh, bargaining with God saying, if you really are there, then do this to prove your presence. Do this to prove your existence. And it goes on to say, many times we say, I wonder how many times that thought has flickered through our minds. We look at our circumstances and then, being, and then begin to wonder whether God really loves us because if he really did, things would be different. Mm. But that's not really, in fact, the case. There are often two rationales that lead us to doubt God and God's goodness. First, when we have a burning desire in our hearts and minds for something that we believe is good, the idea that God might want something different for us mm -hmm. may seem ridiculous. So we say, if God doesn't give us what we want, then really he does not exist. Mm -hmm. But the Bible didn't say that God will give us whatever we want. He says, whatsoever you ask according to my will, yes. I'll provide it. So if it's not according to God's will, then God is not going to provide it. But if he is going to provide it, he will provide it when it is needed. Thus the saying that was very common growing up, you may not have it when you want it, <laughs> but what? It's always right on time. Yeah. God is the God that provides exactly when we need it. The second rationale is we may doubt God's goodness because our experience clashes with what we believe. Mm. In other words, if God really exists, why am I facing a fiery furnace? Mm. Yeah. If God really exists, why am I facing a night in the lion's den? If God really exists, why am I chained to a wall to soldiers who are chained to a wall? If God really exists, and I've often said, sometimes God has to allow us to be in circumstances where the revelation of God is far mightier than it would have been prior to us being in a difficult circumstance. That's good. The revelation of God, because when we, when we are in difficult circumstances, the eye of faith begins to really see God when we say, mm -hmm. no one could have extricated me from that circumstance other than God. Mm -hmm. No one could have answered my prayer the way it was answered other than God. So the invisible God, whom we know by faith exists because he's given us evidence in creation, often shows himself not in mundane ways, but as my lesson says, our father's extravagance. God shows himself in extravagant ways. The statement continues. If something looks good or feels good or sounds good or tastes good, then it must be good. That's our rationale. Mm. And so we get angry with God when we can't have it. Yeah. See, God, you know, this, this fits perfectly. I mean, this is the color that I want. This is the job that I need. I have to have that promotion. This is the salary that I know I could survive on. This is the house that will make me look good in my next position. Mm. And God is saying, no, no, you can't take any of those things with you. I'm going to put you in a position in a situation where your prayer life is going to increase. Have you ever had that? Mm. And there are circumstances that the invisible God allows us to experience, not to increase our stuff, but to increase our faith. Here's one of the answers to that. God answers all things according to his will and not according to our wishes. First John 5, verse 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions mm -hmm. that we have asked. I've been in situations where people have, uh, just recently, as a matter of fact, um, Somebody walked into church on Sabbath morning, a couple, and their baby was going through agony. They said, my baby's ear is stopped up. The, the, her eardrum is perforated, mm -hmm. and the doctors can't do anything for her, and she cannot sleep just for a few minutes. And both parents were in tears, and I was standing by the sound booth, you know, in our church. And they said, Pastor, Pastor, you are a man of God. Please pray that our baby will be healed. Please pray our baby would be healed. I'm on my way to the back to get ready between Sabbath school and church. And they, 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 they embraced me. Please pray for my baby to be healed. Well, I said, Lord, this is your moment and prayed. And I got a phone call to two days later. They said, God healed our child. Glory to God. Praise God. God healed our child. Amen. 
The doctors don't know what happened, but God healed our child. Lord. Thank you for praying for us. We knew that God could speak through you. Those are those, those, are those humbling moments yes. that we remember what the Bible says. What is man that you are mindful of him? Mm -hmm. Or the son of man that you even visit him? Mm -hmm. Those are those moments. But then there are some things that block, that block the extravagance of God. Here are a few things. Psalm 66, 18, mm. if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Mm. Proverbs 28, 9, one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Mm. But then, so how can we participate in seeing the extravagance of the invisible God? Mm. Here are a couple of ways we can do that. Romans 10, verse 17, do we know it? Mm. What does it say? Mm. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word, the of, word God. of God. And then one more, Malachi 3.10, here's where you can trust God. He says, prove me now in this, mm -hmm. if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. You think about finances, that's the blessing of faith to see the invisible God. Mm 